What's going on everybody? Today we are going to show you how to test your soil. So in the a little bit ago we started a video on how to like better new, give your yard more nutrition and lower the pH but then we realized we don't even know how to I mean what soil level we are at. So today we have this soil tester and we are going to be seeing exactly what our yard has and how we could even better nutritionize it don't care if that's a word or not but anyway we're going to show you how you can get this test and all that so let's get right into it so we ordered this off amazon it had pretty good ratings and it's called my soil test kit fertilize responsibly so let's open this up Tape is chippy. Oh, you don't even care. All right, so are there instructions in here? So here's our kit registration. Important to keep this document for our results. And we're going to share our information with you guys, so if you wanted to log in and see our results, you'd be more than welcome to. So it looks like it comes with a, a cup some kind of liquid do not remove contents just add soil so some kind of liquid with a ball. I don't know what that is it's weird then there's a cup right here for measuring so it says one register two add soil three mail kit four get results five amend soil so it comes with the first class first package. class package so it says first register so here's the registration so we're going to go on to our registration and we're going to uh fill that out we're not going to do that online or if we do it online we'll we'll show you here in a second and uh then we're going to collect what does it say collect collect soil from five separate location spots within your desired testing area the soil should be collected at a depth of six inches combined the collected soil in a large plastic bag or bucket and mix thoroughly breaking up any chunks samples should be free of any large plant material and other debris using the provided scoop collect one level scoop of mixed soil and add it to the jar containing di water and nutrient absorption capsule firmly secure the lid and do not dump water out of the jar so then after we're done with that we're gonna it says to mail in your sample within one day of adding the soil to the jar ensure the jar is firmly secure place the jar in the provided postage place envelope in your mailbox all right so it says that we need to get five to seven different soil samples from different parts of our yard for desired testing. So we're gonna go get a little plastic bag and we're gonna start that. So this is actually a hole we're preparing for our Aravipa avocado. And this is one of the reasons why we're wanting to do the soil test. So as you can see, you can see like where the wood chip layer was versus where the regular soil begins. Get a little scrape on the side, Jackson, of where you see it, the, our, our soil uh, ends and the regular, get the clay soil. This, yep, get the clay, yeah. Can just put it in? Yep, just put it in the bag. Okay. And then we'll come over here. It says to dig in like such inches down, so go over by that banana. That's a pretty for you. Artichoke. All right, so Jackson's gonna dig down about several inches. We've got some nice kind of black soil there. Try not to get any like uh, leaves or anything in there, okay? All right. All right, just take a little bit of a handful there. Yep, put it in. You can already see the difference between the clay and that. So two different types of soil right there. Let's come over here by the low quat and just dig a little bit down there. All 
Alright, that should be good. Yeah, try not to get what try to just get soil though. Okay. That's right. A lot of organic matter in our soil. Okay, so it said six spots. So we'll get at least one more. Why don't you get from the top of that holes pile? Because that'll be kind of what the bottom of the hole would have been. Let's get a nice little scoop of that. I really want to know kind of what the, the native soil is like because that's going to be what has the lower pH. And we only have the nice topsoil for the first like six inches or so. Which is still pretty nice. Which is still pretty nice. All right, so it says to mix it together. So come over here. And we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, all right, so let's go over here, we'll get our scoop. Alright guys, so we've already gotten registered and we'll show you how to do that in this video as well. But we're now we're just gonna pour it's a good sampling of every area of our yard because yeah. as much as I wanted to get just the native soil, we also needed a good idea of what our wood chips have been doing over the past six years. Now I'm just gonna open this up. Really careful not to spill the water. I would prefer to like. No, no, no. You can break it right here. Here, let Dad do it. All right. We'll let Dad do it, okay? All right, so. I oh, broke the seal. I think that's what they wanted. All right, now. It says to be careful not to spill any of that. All right, we're gonna show you guys how to register. Just pull up any web browser and type in my soil test, mysoiltesting.com. And then once you've typed that in, you'll go to the My Soil Test website and you click on the register kit sign in icon. This will then take you to another screen. If you've already got a login, you can log in or you can go down and create an account like we're doing, because it's our first time. So then it's just some very basic e information, email, you create a password, um, verify the password, uh, you have to d have a display name, which is kind of what we want for the specific test that we're doing. Um, needs a postal code. They just want to know the area, I guess, that you're coming from. And then you hit create and it'll come over to this screen and then you register the kit you got so the kit has an ID number on it it's actually on the bottom and it's also on the card that that we read in the beginning so you type in the ID number um, you type it in actually twice to make sure that uh, to make sure that you've typed it in correct then you type in what you're doing your test for so in our case it's our fruit trees um, and then it just asks for a, a name for the, the specific test in case we had multiple tests that were turning in at, in at once. It asks you what the square footage area that you're, you're, you're testing in, um, and you put that in as well. So the name we chose for ours was Backyard Fruit Trees, or tr fruit, fruit Tree Area. So pretty simple, it says that we'll get our results from six to nine days. All right, so now we got it sealed. We're gonna put that back down. And it does it say to shake it or anything? No, it doesn't. Put it in the jar. Okay, now back up. Make sure that's good and tight. We're gonna put this in the first class mail. Okay. 
you see. Alright, now we're gonna go drop that sucker in the mail. Bye bye. Alright, so hopefully we'll get it in a few days. All right, so after seven days, I got an email that said the results are ready. So I clicked on my email link, which actually takes you right to the page, which is awesome. And then I clicked on the test. If you had multiple tests, you'd have to pick the one you want. And to my surprise, I actually saw my pH was high. It was at 7.04, which is actually just barely high. But even for most of our trees, we want to have it uh, right around the, the probably five and a half to six and a half range is where I'm shooting to have. So I have a little work to do there. I was actually kind of surprised what I was really high on, which was uh, phos phosphorus. It was very high. Um, not quite off the charts high, but like a third higher than it should have been. Um, nitrogen, extremely low, uh, which all plants need nitrogen to grow. So that being low was a little disheartening. thought that what I was doing was helping create nitrogen, but definitely was not. Um, phosphorus was high potassium was low as well not not quite as bad as the 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 nitrogen but that could be why i'm seeing some undersized growth in a lot of the the trees my sulfur levels were good calcium was on the high side uh, magnesium was on optimal sodium was on optimal iron was very low um, manganese low zinc low copper low and and barren or whatever very low so then over here on the side it gives you the recommended um, fertilizers to use so if you want to go the organic or you want to go the synthetic route um, and then up top here it actually has links to recommended fertilizers. so if you click on the organic it actually sends you to Amazon surprise surprise I bought this uh, kit on Amazon so there's an affiliation affiliation there um, Amazon will then uh, give us this option. It's an all-purpose organic fertilizer. Um, my thoughts on organic versus synthetic is I'm okay with synthetics, but I don't want them to disturb the, the organisms in the soil. So if you have a synthetic that will harm the soil, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. You have to look at what each of them are doing. Some of them are natural like minimal, minerals like sulfur. But only the organic link seemed to work for their recommendation, so that was kind of a bummer. Then on their graph, they have Learn More, and I actually thought this was pretty interesting because it breaks down what each of the different elements are, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and it tells you what having a deficiency in those causes, which I really didn't know what a lot of these issues were, and it was nice to kind of see what, what their their use was what their purpose was so it's really really cool to kind of break that down um they also have a little like graph or learn more under their recommendations chart that tells you you know how to read the recommendations and um it gives examples that that they have um telling you you know you read this you should this is how you'd react to it and uh, once we get down towards the bottom of this it actually really breaks down and says that you know there's a difference between reading this for your 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 lawn versus uh, vegetable gardens and um, your fruit trees and shrubs and and other bushes so everyone knows that every plant has different requirements as far as nutrition goes so it's important to know you know, you're going to plant blueberries very different than you're going to plant lavender. One's very acidic, one's very alkaline, you know, and talks about how to use lime, which I don't think anyone in Arizona ever uses lime. It's very alkaline. It's what we usually combat the high pH with sulfur. So it talks about here using elemental sulfur. That's one of those things that, yes, it is an acid. Yes, it isn't necessarily organic but it's a natural thing all right guys so we got our results back and as we can see the ph needs to be lowered a lot and we need to add more nitrogen and potassium and stuff because it's still at like a seven and we need it way down the ph is at a seven yeah, 
Yeah. So we just need to bring it all down and make it a lot nicer. And bring up our nitrogen and iron and, and all that manganese stuff. and potassium. So yeah. well, we thought we were doing good on a few things that we weren't, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're happy we finally have our results. Subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.